there that the current version of uh, the maps doesn't have an uninstaller. Um, this isn't a big deal. You can still get them off. It's not hard. You can undo all the changes. You just need another little program, and it's called Map Set Toolkit. You can find this uh, either go to cipherman1.googlepages.com or just Google Map Set Toolkit. I can never remember uh, how to get there myself. Um, so if you come here, scroll down. Download Map Set Toolkit. Save it somewhere where you find it. I've already got it there. And uh, then uh, you'll find this program, and it's it's a very very useful program. Apologies, my mouse batteries are dying, which is why you'll see I'm not double clicking on anything. But what it does this is kind of a it it. it Put a wrapper on some of the uh, the more uh, tricky parts of uh, managing custom map sets. One of them being adding and removing map sets. So IBYCS Top, that is uh, the latest version of Ibicus Topo. So you can click on that and hit uninstall. Well, I don't actually want to uninstall it, so I'm not gonna. But um, but yeah, so you can see all of the map sets that I have installed there. And uh, if you're having trouble with map sources, there's another great little program to install. It should be able to pick out which uh, map set is giving you trouble and even why it's giving you trouble. It gives you a lot of good troubleshooting information, so I highly recommend this program. It's also got some utilities in here for uh, if you download other custom maps that don't install themselves into map source, you can use it to uh, you can use it to create the map set uh, in install for you and really uh, really straighten things out um, but yeah it's a great little program so this is still installing well I'm going to cheat because I already have uh, I already have a working version of my maps installed surprise surprise so we'll just let that continue on and running in the background so when you first uh, come into map source you may see a screen like this you may also see a screen like this yeah, or like this. This is the uh, base map that's installed with uh, with Garmin Training Center. You see kind of the roughly the level of detail that you have on here. It's not not great, but it gives you an idea of uh, where what part of the city you're in. I zoomed into Calgary here, which is where uh, I'm located. Uh, so it's fairly coarse detail. Uh, we can look at some of the. This is what some of the uh, the commercial uh, Garmin maps look look like. This is. Uh, this is uh, Metro Guide Canada version 4. There is a newer version out, but I haven't uh, bought it yet. So uh, this is older version. You can see uh, there are quite a bit of detail on here. This one's designed for straight navigation, so you notice there's a lot of uh, points of interest on it. Um, you'll notice uh, this one's a little bit out of date. So if we come here and we uh, switch over to My Maps, you have a whole lot more roads show up. These, these are all newly built uh, areas since uh, that version of Metro Guide was released. Uh, we got uh, quite a bit of data on here. You can pan around and see uh, the kinds of information which is uh, which are on these maps. We got uh, mountains and vegetation coverage. Vegetation coverage uh, isn't indicated in any uh, commercial uh, Garmin maps that I'm aware of. Um, the only thing these maps don't do that the uh, commercial ones do, I should say two things. One is uh, the 3D uh, digital elevation models. Uh, that's a function of the, that uh, format hasn't been uh, reverse engineered uh, fully yet. So uh, it's uh, going to be a while before those are uh, available as uh, free maps. And uh, the other thing they don't do is auto routing. That's a function of uh, the data that I have just doesn't have the information required in order to generate uh, an auto routing map. Uh, you need things like one ways and turn restrictions and all that kind of stuff, which I don't have. So uh, if you're aware of a data source from Canada that has that, please let me know and I'll uh, do what I can. Now if you uh, have gotten this far and you haven't uh, managed to see any uh, any detail map, if you're stuck looking at kind of a map like this going, where's all my data? Oh, it doesn't look anything like his. 
and I'm zoomed right in and I don't see anything, um, there's a few things you can try. Go Try going to View. See, right now I've got Show GPS Map de Detail turned on, but uh, if I click Hide, see if you're getting something like this when you zoom in, you don't have all the detail turned on. So go View, Show GPS Map Detail, and you'll see a lot more details you zoom in. The other thing to make sure is you, you've got detail set to highest. I always keep it set at. I find it doesn't show me enough detail otherwise. Um, the other thing which you can check, if something weird has, hap has happened uh, during uh, the installation process, um, you'll, you'll find that uh, some areas won't show up. Now, because of the numbering of the maps, the maps on the east side of the country are more likely to show up than the maps on the west side of the country. So if you're having trouble getting things to display, try zooming in to somewhere on the east coast. And uh, if you see detail out on the east coast but not on the west coast, chances are something's happened with, uh, with the install process. So what you'll want to do is uh, try and troubleshoot that. So to troubleshoot that, open up my computer. If you install to the default location, it should be under program files slash ibicus topo. Where have you gone? Uh, I don't think that's where I just installed it, but it should do. You won't see quite all this. Some of this is my uh, default stuff in here. But you notice there should be 1,786 files in uh, the slash IMGs directory. This is where all the detail maps are stored. You should have uh, this file here, ibycstop.img. You should have ibycstop.tdb, and you should have ibycstop.mdx. The rest of these files you won't have. Those are uh, files I use when uh, while building maps. Okay. Now, while I'm while I'm here, it might be worth uh, explaining to you some of the uh, the naming structure of these files. I've had a few requests uh, to. Uh, to talk about those, so um, let's pick one out. Um, I'm going to pick one of the small files out here. Uh, so let's take this file here at random. The first digit here is a one. Okay, one is common for all of uh, this map set. My different map sets all have different uh, digits to start them out. The next three digits are uh, the uh, the start of the NTS sheet number. Now, I'll explain the NTS uh, numbering system in a minute, um, but for now, just know that that translates directly. The next two digits are translate into a letter, so uh, 10 would be the tenth letter of the alphabet, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So J, and then 12 would be the 1 to 50,000 sheet number. Okay, so the, this one would be 082J 